we've been saying for years, the NBA regular season doesn't matter, and now they're telling you, just get to the playoffs. By the playoffs, we hope to have vaccines and we're ready to go. So don't take these regular season games as serious. And that's probably how we're going to have to do it, because I don't know. The NBA is putting new protocols in. Let's go inside the Sixers. Jay Blevins joins us now. Give us a little update on what's happening uh, with the 76ers. Getting ready for the Miami Heat. Uh, Jay, my understanding is the Sixers actually have more players available than the Heat do. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, injury report, and the Heat have 11 players um, who are out or probable or questionable. So they've got 11 on the injury report. Sixers only have 10 on the injury report. So it's, uh, you know, huge advantage for them. Right? <laughs> um, obviously, one of the biggest problems going on right now um, the Sixers were cruising. They were, they were, you know, looking like a team that was a lot different from that team we saw last year. You take Seth Curry out, that changed the dynamic big time, the one game against Brooklyn. But is there anything, any takeaway? I don't know that you could take much away from these last couple of games, right? I totally agree with you. I think it's, to your guys' point, this is like just starting a preseason again. I mean, they, they're they're not really – doing much other than getting some of the deep bench young guys, the rookies uh, playing time to get their feet under them on an NBA floor. But aside from that, what are you learning? What do you see? What can you take away? There's, there's really not much you can evaluate. I mean, it it is, and and you, you said exactly right. The minute Seth Curry went out, that fundamentally changed their, their scheme. If you go back to our conversation last week, about what he does with that, you know, oppositional gravity with Embiid, that was taken away. And then just the, you know, ridiculousness of having half of a team uh, that, quite frankly, has, has no continuity whatsoever, so you can't install your offense, you can't run your sets, you, you can't really do much of anything except roll the ball out there, say, Tyrese Maxey, go, here's your, you know, the greenest light you've ever had since probably middle school. Do we have any information on Ben Simmons and his knee issue? I just wonder, did they make it look more serious by holding him out against the Hawks because of that $25,000 fine or anything like that? Uh, Oh, I have no confirmed reports. I have many different conflicting reports. So uh, I'm going to guess it's not a very serious injury. Yeah, I thought he was probable to play tonight. Oh, okay. Probable for tonight. He's, he's, he's probable for tonight, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't expect it to be a serious issue. With so Mac, I, with Maxi, how much yeah. do we put into what we're seeing? I mean, because he's playing with a bunch of guys who you know um, are not going to get a lot of minutes. I mean, is this going to change his role once they get back to full strength? Well. Um, yes and no. I think what it tells you is he can make good decisions, not turn the ball over when he's got the ball in his hands. I think you feel more comfortable with him playing more minutes when needed uh, than you did. But, um, you know, you give a a good ball handler that can get to his spots, you know, an unlimited green light, and they're going to get a lot of shots up. So, um, I think there's a lot of positives, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go crazy and say he needs to start for this team yet. I think, um, you, you know, it, and there's, again, there's, it was positive to see him be able to compete with, with another small, really quick live ball guard in Trey Young, but it's there's there's only so much you can really take from this. Last night, we saw Dwight Howard and Joel Embiid on the floor at the same time. Is that just a product of the roster? I mean, I remember when the Sixers in Toronto played, you had Ibaka and Gasol out there just to try and switch things up. Like, I wonder if Doc is ever thinking, huh, maybe we can utilize this in short spurts at some time throughout the season at all. But, you know, it's just a little weird to see it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't. I think Dwight Howard, he fouls too much. There's a lot of great things he brings to the team. I think he fouls too much to ever think that you're going to get him with to be a reliable backup when Joel is on the bench and get minutes with Joel. I, I just don't think, and I, I actually think he's a better shooter um, than, uh, than his, his history. Uh, I actually like his, uh, his three, 
But no, I I think he he gets in foul trouble way too easy for you to take the chance that you can have them both on the floor. Jason Blevins, Sixers tonight against the Heat right here on 97.3 ESPN. Go to 97.3 ESPN.com for more coverage on the game. Anybody else uh, stand out that said, huh, okay, um, you're, you've earned some more possible minutes when things normalize? I don't know about more minutes, but I think watching Isaiah Joe go from really looking like he was um, – struggling he had a reputation uh not just a reputation he was a great shooter uh in college to just to not getting uh under control not getting in rhythm in his first few outings the last couple of games he started to uh to, to feel like he's comfortable on the floor i think that's a positive so i think the more playing time he gets i think that will be good for his development long term i still think physically he's not he, he doesn't have an NBA body yet um, for for this year, but I think all the signs there are encouraging for his for his ability to grow into physically grow into uh, a role in the future for this team. Um, Dakota Mathias can shoot, but I'm not. You know, I think his his uh, he's he's even started a couple of games, which is, shows you how the depths of lunacy that this is. Um, you know, I'm not sure he's a, a long-term option, uh, long, long, long-term solution in a, in a major role for them. Yeah. Um, as you posted at Jay Blevins NBA, the amount of guys, uh, that are out or probable, uh, tonight for both teams, um, the list is long where, how much longer for guys that are, um, you know, contact tracing, not Curry who actually had COVID, but, you know, Harris, uh, Thibel, Milton, that level of player. I'm actually going through this myself. So my wife at work um, was exposed to, to two people who are positive. We're waiting on our second result uh, for a test. She was exposed last Tuesday. Um, and we really won't know whether we're safe to be around other people uh, for about 10 days. That's assuming we get two negative tests. So we got our first test result. We took a test on Friday. We got our results yesterday morning. Uh, we took another test yesterday. And um, assuming we get a second negative tomorrow, we might be safe to be around people by Saturday. So if if they don't have any other wizardry to get better testing, um, you know, it's, it's about a 10-day process, I think. That's assuming negative tests. Where I'm having the issue with the league right now is they thought about this in the offseason with such a great philosophy. Let's put out the first half so we can totally work with whatever gets postponed in the second half. And it's almost as if, well, they're starting to postpone games now, but when the Sixers first had issues, they were not willing to do it. And it's like they had this great plan and they weren't willing to actually execute it until now, you know, you're starting to see things more. But it just doesn't make sense from a league standpoint. You built this product the way you did for a reason. So let's utilize that. Yeah, but... You know, think about the league and think about the teams and how do they generate revenue when there are no no fans in this uh, stadiums. They 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 can only generate revenue right now from broadcast rights and jersey sales, right? So, I I don't know what those conversations are like. I I can tell you that Doc Rivers wasn't happy about playing the other night. Um, you know, because those things are not within his his uh, set of responsibilities. But, you know, there are a lot of people, uh, this is a huge industry, They're, the financial um, ramifications are real. Uh, people have been impacted in our industry uh, by cancellations and by, by postponements. So there's a lot more to it than just the the players and the coaches. There's, there's a lot of people that make their living um, off of this. So I don't know. It's a complicated situation. Yeah. And the NBA today agreed on new protocols, including the players will now have to wear masks at all times on the benches and in the locker rooms. They're only allowed to fist bump when socializing before and after games and pregame team meetings will be restricted to 10 minutes. Teams on the road will no longer be able to dine at pre-approved restaurants. I mean, they're really expanding these protocols. 
Um, you know, it, it's they're, they're doing their best to try to get this out there, but who knows? Uh, they, they do not want to pause the season. As you mentioned, there's a lot of income that they would be lost if they did this again. So this is what you're going to get uh, for a little while. But, Jay, I'll ask you this in terms of basketball itself. Uh, we know the Harden stuff, that was ramping up. Starting to hear little whispers about Bradley Beal. I was not all that interested in a Ben Simmons-Harden swap, but would anybody out there be interested in a Bradley Beal acquisition? I mean, uh, people should be very interested in that, and that should be a, uh, a really – that's a really interesting debate because I think that the ages are more um, – the timelines are, are more lined up, I think. Uh, Bradley Beal has really impressed me. I've seen him, I think, twice in person already this year. And um, his defense, I mean, he has become just a uh, a real legitimate team defender, um, which I'm not sure you can you can say that about Harden. Um, and, and we all know he can fill up the this stat sheet as, as well. Um, Beal is, uh, you know, has always said he wants to stay in, in DC, but uh, how many years of, you know, 35 win seasons can, can somebody really put up with? So I don't know if, if uh, that's a discussion that should absolutely be had. Yeah. Uh, both sides should be talking to each other, feeling each other out about it. Doesn't mean that they come to a deal, but um, the Sixers have a lot of different ways to make make uh, deals happen. Especially if there's one bright side with all of this playing time for young guys, you're showing other teams uh, film of guys that it's not just theoretical. You're you're showing off skill sets that other t- other teams could fall in love with. So, you know. It, it, those conversations should be happening. These guys are professionals in the front office. These are these are absolutely discussions that should be happening. Well, uh, definitely keep our eye on that one. I love Bradley Beal, uh, and I would probably uh, be first in line to make that move. He's Jay Blevins. You can follow him at Jay Blevins NBA on Twitter and check out his content at 97.3 ESPN.com. Sixers Heat tonight. We have it for you live on 97.3 ESPN, and then they'll play the Heat again on Thursday if they can get enough players uh, to play this game tonight. Right now it's on, so Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Busy week to be shorthanded, uh, but we got you covered over at 97.3 ESPN.com. Jay, thanks, man. Hey, thank you. And he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, are inside the Sixers.